All right, guys, welcome to Unapologetic Live. Today, of course, we have to talk about International Women's Day. But you know what? I want to do it through a different lens. Let's talk about the erasure of women on International Women's Day. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome to Unapologetic Live. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. And of course, today is International Women's Day. We're going to get to that. But first, guys, sign up for my email list and newsletter in the description down below. You'll get personal updates from me, plus updates for all the content we put out throughout the week. I did want to let you guys know that my episode of Lift Run Shoot with Cam Haynes is out now. You guys can check that out on his YouTube channel, at Cameron Haynes. I've also made a community post on YouTube for it, if you guys want to go and see that. Running up a mountain, lifting weights, shooting a bow and arrow. Taylor came along for the ride. His nose bled in the video. So <laughs> there's a lot to see there. Of all the things I could have included. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> so Taylor's here, of course. Scott's also in the producer's bay. What's up, everyone? <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about the erasure of women. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. And I kind of wanted to just get out as many points as I could about where this is happening in our society today. I put together about 15 stories and we'll, we'll go through those 15. I saved some of the crazier ones for the end of today. So, so stick around because there's a future to all this. There's more. And of course, we're going to shout out some of the biological women, the real women, who are doing great work in the arena of gender, gender studies, transgenderism, and this whole movement that's taking place right now. But let's talk about the women, and I put that in air quotes, who are getting recognition for their superficial and artificial womanhood. And you know it all starts with Dylan Mulvaney. That's where we're gonna start today because that's where it all really started on this channel. I found Dylan Mulvaney on TikTok when he had a few million followers and decided, let's make a podcast about this individual because there's some really interesting stuff going on here. This is gonna be one of our first biggest trans influencers who is rising to unheard of amounts of fame on the platform simply by documenting day one of being a girl in a very sexist and misogynistic caricature of womanhood that we've been seeing from Dylan Mulvaney and others like him. So let's check back in because this last year, Dylan Mulvaney got to go to the White House and talk to our very own president, Mr. Biden. Let's see the clip. And it, it feels like Republicans have turned trans and non-binary people into this thing to blame society's downfall on in some ways. And this narrative is not only dangerous to our mental health, but also our physical safety. Mm -hmm. And particularly trans women of color are being murdered at an alarming rate. More than any other group of people. Thank you. How can Democratic leaders be more effective in advocating for us trans people and our families and our lives and our opportunities? I'm not being facetious when I say this, being seen with people like you. No, I mean it. I genuinely mean it. People fear what they don't know. They fear what mm. they don't know. And when people realize, individuals realize, oh, this is what they're telling me to be frightened of? This is the problem? This is, I mean, people change their minds. People. Oh, it's trouble loading there. But he says when people see, uh, people like you, Dylan, this is when people change their minds. And it reminds me of a video that we once responded to of Dylan where Dylan was talking about going into the women's restroom and saying that if you're concerned about trans people being in the women's restroom, this is what you're concerned with. Little old me, how could I ever do anything wrong in a woman's bathroom? And of course, we're going to circle back to some stories uh, of women being victimized due to this sort of ideology, because it's not just little old me. It's also men who uh, want to take advantage of a system and be predators towards uh, young women and, and girls, and they're taking this opportunity. But these are the people who we honor at the White House. And mind you, this was in a time where our country is, was not doing well. You could sort of debate as to whether or not we're even doing well now. But in the midst of a lot of turmoil, peak inflation, people not knowing what's going on, people asking for help from the White House, this is what was being hosted. 
Dylan Mulvaney and a questionnaire about what we can do for for trans people, a truly marginalized group, so marginalized that Dylan has made his way all the way to the Grammys, has been sponsored by numerous companies, was featured in Ulta Beauty's uh, the, the Beauty of Girlhood, which we'll, we'll feature here. And I want to you guys just tell me what, what stands out of place in this video in particular, The Beauty of Girlhood. And we're on day 167 of Girlhood. Mr. Hollywood, who I'm right Mr. here. Hollywood, zoom in on that. Did either of, did you guys see a girl? <laughs> I didn't see a girl in the Beauty of Girlhood pod. Did you, Scott? No. Taylor? Negative. Okay. Just making sure that that's not, it's not just me. I feel like I, my, my eyes may be deceiving me, but I did not see a girl. But we're marginalized, right? We are part of a marginalized group. And as, as far as that whole murder rate reference, I am having trouble even finding data to, to back that up. We at one point talked about it on this show, uh, but I could not find the, the numbers that we referenced at that time. It just feels like this has become yet another spot in the victimhood ladder. If, if anything, probably one of the, the top spots. I think trans people are above black people right now as far as your, your victimhood is... I don't know, uh, referenced in, in how much value it has. Trans people are at the top of the ladder. And that makes Dylan the person at the top of the ladder. Now, Dylan himself created a bunch of copycats as well who decided to hop on TikTok and try and ride the wave of the trend that he created. We also have Grant Sykes. Let's take a look. Day 54. Day 54 of being a girl, and I am entering my Vestavia Hills housewife era. I just feel like I'm entering the bad bitch genre. Oh my god. Like this fit. Love. <laughs> I hope you all have a great day. Not just a good day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> which one of which one of you uh, would sooner be the next uh, TikTok trans trendsetter? Taylor, Scott, either of you planning on hopping on the wagon here? I'm not hopping on this wagon. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do your makeup. <laughs> oh my gosh. The weird part is like women don't even act like this. I know. You know? Yeah. I know. This is not female behavior. I mean, there are, of course, a few women who do talk and act like that, but it is just peak caricature as far as being female is concerned. And this is what they're being criticized for. And for some reason, they make it out of the criticism every single time by deflecting, by talking about how marginalized they are, but what does being a woman mean to you? Doesn't mean that you just slap on some clothes you brought at the woman's section at TJ Maxx, and then you buy some makeup, you throw that on your face, and you know, if you wanna go farther, you put on a wig. Grant couldn't be bothered to, to put on a wig, just decided to do the clothes and the makeup. And then you pitch your voice up like this, and then you turn on your camera and you start talking to it and you say it's day 54 and that just makes you a woman now. <laughs> I mean, wild. What's, what's wild too is um, you were mentioning, oh, that now the transgender movement and those people are now above, say, black people mm -hmm. in, in terms of the hierarchy. Yes. Um, what's, what's even crazier is it's like, I feel as though those people should also look and see like, oh, these are white biological males who have found a way to circumvent the entire hierarchy right. and find their way at the top again. That's weird. It's such a good point. It's weird how you guys managed yeah. to do that. <laughs> you gotta, you have to become a sneaky people in today's day and age to get back up there at the top of the ladder. And you must do so by abandoning your, your masculinity and taking on what is a caricature of a woman. We all watched that video of Dylan gallivanting through the forest in heels and short shorts and a sports bra saying I'm day day whatever of being a woman and I just love nature and I love being outside and these are my hiking heels it is the bimbofication of women it is a caricature and it's so interesting that when taking on womanhood they also take on this sort of superficial stupidity in the way that they talk to the camera and the way that they talk to people what does that what does that mean to you guys as far as what they think it means to be a woman? In Dylan's initial video, day one, he said, um, 
day one of, of being a girl, I, I wrote a scathing letter to some company that I'm not going to send. I told somebody that I was fine when I really wasn't fine and was making all these stereotypical jokes about what it means to be a woman. And it went out on the internet, it went viral, and lo and behold, this is the person that gets invited to the White House to sit in front of the president and talk about what he should be doing with his day and the different projects and legislation that his administration should be focusing on. Clown world. If, if you like made a TV show or, or wrote a movie and made it a woman, female character, uh, behave in the way that Dylan behaves and prances around and acts dumb and needs to take a cry break in the middle of the day and, you know, wrote a letter because to get out his feelings or whatever it may be, people would be upset because you're playing off of all of those stereotypes of women and how they shouldn't act or it's small minded or closed minded or belittling or demeaning of women to put them in a box like that. But for some reason, like you said, uh, when a man does it, when a biological male does it, uh, it's something that we celebrate as a society, which is just, it's such an upside down <laughs> world that we're living in. But, you know, Amla, I'm just really grateful that you're able to highlight all the achievements of of men on uh, this International Women's Day. So on right. behalf of men, Scott and I just really thank you for, uh, this is a really big day for us because men have just been achieving so much in women's spaces. And yeah. so I just yeah. wanted to thank you for uh highlighting all of this for us today you know somebody's somebody's got to do it and you know what i always say nobody does womanhood like men <laughs> <laughs> nobody does it as great as the men do it so here we are and we're gonna we're gonna tack on some some more achievements and we will get there i'm gonna save some of of the lunacy over to the end of course we have to touch on uh the Canadian trans teacher with the giant prosthetic boobs uh, who has now been placed on administrative leave uh, and <laughs> apparently while on this leave is maintaining the caricature of the prosthetic boobs and wearing them around. This is uh, him pictured at the pool. I believe this was a shop teacher, right? So we this person was wearing these prosthetic boobs while maintaining and working with heavy machinery which seems like a hazard even if a woman was uh you know endowed this way i don't think i'd want her using <laughs> using every heavy machinery in any way Man, there are or kids form. here <laughs> yeah. that sounds uh -huh. like a, a workers comp issue waiting to happen at any moment but uh -huh. i like to think that this guy is just trolling. I like to think that about all of the trans influencers that we're seeing right now, although odds are I'm incorrect. I hope that one day Dylan Mulvaney and this prosthetic boob wearing shop teacher turn on their phone cameras and say, gotcha, I just wanted to show you how crazy the world really was. I just wanted to show you how much lunacy people would put up with if we just pushed the boundaries and did something, you know, out there, did something clown world, just to see if people would accept it. And you guys accepted it. Now take this moment to think about what you've done <laughs> and fix it. <laughs> but I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think the prosthetic boobs are gonna come off. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's a little too white pillish for you, huh? <laughs> yeah, oh gosh. But the teacher has been placed on leave. So at least that is, is reassuring that some group of people decided that this should not be around children who are trying to learn in their formative years on this earth. And it's very much true. I liken this to just being a drag queen. You know, there used to be some sort of, of difference there. The drag queens were the bimbified, super huge, clearly sexualized versions of women. They slap on the big boobs and very clown-esque makeup and the huge wigs and the dresses where everything's falling out of them and they dance around all sexually and it was meant to be for adults. But now you can just do this in everyday life, walk around and teach kids shop class until somebody calls you out and says something about it. <sighs> On to the next, we have more. But wait, there is more. Let's talk about sports, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go through some different categories of women, biological women, 
who are now being set aside in the name of trans activism. First, we have our newest story, USA powerlifting to allow trans athletes to compete with women after losing suit. USA powerlifting must allow trans athletes to compete in the women's division after transgender lifter JC Cooper won her discrimination case against the organization. The Federation was mandated to cease and desist from all unfair discriminatory practices related to sexual orientation and gender identity and reverse its former policy of barring transgender athletes within two weeks, according to the ruling obtained by Fox News. Cooper went and filed this complaint with the Minnesota Department of Human Rights in 2019, claiming that the organization violated the Human Rights Act by barring him from being able to compete in the women's division. <coughs> Powerlifting, guys. You guys remember when Zuby Music went super viral because he competed in, in lifting as a, as a woman and did it as a joke? It's no longer a joke. People are really doing this. JC Cooper is now gonna be powerlifting against women who are going to stand no chance if other men you know, see that as inspiration and go and do the same. Are we to ignore what is biological reality that men are by and large far, far stronger than women. And just allow this to happen for the sake of what it makes you feel good. It validates somebody else's delusion and now you have to be a part of that at the, at the burden of other women who have been working their entire lives to be able to compete in, in these arenas and in these fields. I guess so. Yeah, we've gotten to a place where we're basically legislating suppression of the truth or legislating suppression of biological reality. We're legislating unfairness in sports and, and in our systems and, and these organizations. You know, the job of a sports governing board is to preserve the integrity of competition. And we know scientifically, factually, that men are stronger than women. They have biological advantages. That's undeniable. And that's clearly borne out by science. And so in order to ignore nor that you have to impose an ideology over basic facts and basic reality and this we see this happening all over society and and it's it's just something that we should not be getting used to uh because the you know it's one thing for women's sports is already a huge thing mm -hmm. and the achievements of women is being <clears throat> um taken away and erased but even broader than that all over society when when we can't even know up from down and whenever we have a legal system that is enforcing a rigid ideology like gender identity ideology or critical race theory or something like that it it bakes unfairness into every interaction it bakes unfairness into the system and it suppresses the truth and suppresses free thought and that's like the deepest part of this that's the most disturbing to me right and it's crazy that this person won this case in the name of fairness they're winning now and saying that biological men can compete against women in the name of fairness. Where is the logic? Where is the science behind that? You look at every sport, nearly every sport that has ever existed that we could possibly be playing right now, and there are separations between the male sex and the female sex. Why? Because there are differences in strengths, there are differences in capability. And already, women's divisions of sports are pretty small. They're not getting much viewership because they don't have the capabilities of men. They don't get to meet the same accolades. They're not achieving the same, uh, the same force as men are. But maybe this is how they solve the problem for the lack of views. They just throw some men in there <laughs> and put them in wigs and skirts, and then people want to watch again. I, on, I would watch that. I, I will say that. I would, I would watch that. But not because I support it, guys. My chair just fell down. Not because I support it. Not because I think it's good. Not because I think it's fair. Because I think it's ridiculous. And this is not the only sport that it's happening in. And I just cannot believe this is winning in the court of law. I can't believe it. I already couldn't believe it was winning in the court of public opinion. And now we take it to the law. <laughs> and they go, yep, <laughs> makes sense. Throw the man in there. There's no way a man's going to lift more than a woman, right? In a power lifting competition. But it doesn't stop there because people said, oh, it was, it's not going to go to other sports. What other sports would a man possibly want to go and, and, and play against women? Here's another story. 
Fury as trans athlete wins women's uh, 1,500 meter event in Canada, a year after breaking the record for the 5,000 meter race for ages 45 to 49. And this trans person's name is Tiffany Newell, who's 50 years old, went and won this event in Canada. If I was a woman who I wanted to play Sonata a sport, I would just, uh, I would sit it out, honestly. I'd, and, and it's a horrible thing to say because these women work so hard to get to the position that they get into. But what else can you do? If Imagine training for, say, a year, at, at the very least, to do something like this. And then you show up on the day and a man in a wig just pulls up and runs right past you. The amount of fury that I, I would feel, the, the fire boiling in my stomach that I would feel, would be incomparable to probably any of the rage that I felt in my life. What is there you to know, run towards? Maybe the maybe Zuby and the giant prosthetic breasts shopkeeper person are onto something. And maybe just men across the board just need to stop playing men's sports and they all should just go to women's sports. You know, let's yep. take the absurdity as far as it goes because there is no limiting principle to to this logic to prevent that from happening. So why not just live in their logic completely and go all out and, you know, will that finally expose the extent of the idiocy because they're there women's sports is done i mean if this continues if this is allowed which it seems to continue to be uh increasing on an upward trajectory as far as allowing trans male athletes to compete in women's sports if that continues their women's sports is no more it's gone and you know is that what they want is that really you know, people are just acting like it's helping some marginalized people but in reality it's erasing an entire uh, sex and their entire prospect for having sports to themselves. So let's just run, roll with it, I say, and expose the extent of the stupidity. Yeah, I mean, at, at what point do people go, okay, you got us. <laughs> this is a bit much. Oh, we're going to have to roll this. At what point is it? Does it, is it 10 sports, which I, we've already met? Is it, is it the Olympics? Is that when they go, oh, hold on, wait a second, this is, you know, too high up the ladder for us to to do anything about where at what point do you go that it really doesn't make sense to have men compete against women and that truth that we've acknowledged all along that we've all been abiding by, which is why there's always been a separation. Maybe we need to return to that. At what point do we return to tradition or is that just gone? Because a lot of this ideology is purely taken on and adopted for the sake of rejecting tradition because they don't care for it. They don't want to hear anything, even if it's logically sound, even if it's scientific in nature, even if they are the victim of the ideology themselves. There are women sitting and supporting this who are competing in sports. There are athletes who are saying, bring it on. <laughs> Allow the transgender athletes to just come on in, kick my ass. <laughs> quite literally, <laughs> quite literally. I mean, in fighting, in boxing, quite literally, like let the men come on and kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is is rejecting safety part of rebelling against tradition? Is rejecting biology uh, part of rebelling against tradition? Is rejecting fairness in yes. sports uh, a part of this? Is rejecting equality part of it? Apparently so. And this is the problem is like, you know, I will entertain and a good faith critique of traditional ideas. You know, I lean right, I'm conservative, whatever. But let, you, with a, a liberal person who still acknowledges the things like biology and can still talk in good faith about from, you know, hey, let's agree on the principles of fairness, equality, things like that. We can have a conversation about, you know, how the laws of society should reflect those norms and, and such. But when you're coming to the table and you can't even say that men and women are physically different, like, you, that's not rebelling against tradition. That's willful ignorance. That's willful denial of reality. And then you're trying to impose that by force on me and on the rest of society. And I think that's what uh, gets so many conservatives or or and liberals mm -hmm. and just, you know, truth seeking, free thinking people upset and gets them off their rocker a little bit is you're you're not playing the game that we've been playing since this country was founded, where we come to the table, we negotiate our differences, we use our speech, we have a shared set of commitment to basic things like truth, like biology, like facts and evidence and reason and coming to the table, agreeing that equality is a good thing and having fairness is a good thing that you can build a society 
society on on people like that. You cannot build a society where there's a, an ideology that is demanding that you bow the knee to it, and they continue to redefine words, redefine uh, norms, and pretend like they're not, and they gaslight you and make you think yep. like you're the bad person for opposing this. And I think so many people, I think, are just so so over uh, over this. Yeah, you're not the bad person for thinking that this is unacceptable. You are not the bad person. If there's nothing else that you learn from this stream, I hope you learn that you are not the bad person for feeling the exact same way that a lot of people feel on these issues. And the the hard part of this is a lot of this could be solved if the women who are competing stood up and said something about it. And there are women who are, shout out to Riley Gaines, who uh, we'll focus on in this next story, talking about Leah Thomas, who is an NCAA swimmer, who, you know, was competing in the 400s, 500s as a man and decided, you know what, let's be a woman and go and compete and swim. And then uh, 400 turned into number one real quick, real quick. Now, Riley Gaines, a fellow NCAA swimmer, came out and said, you know what, this is unacceptable and I'm going to say something about it. Not only is Leah Thomas competing against biological women and kicking their asses, but Leah Thomas has also gone into the female locker room and exposed himself to us. So this is supposed to be a safe space for women to be able to change and, and for the people who love safe spaces. A female locker room is supposed to be one of them where they can change, be vulnerable with one another, get ready, get their mind in the proper headspace to go and compete against one another, and in walks a biological male who gets naked and exposes himself to them. And not only does Leah Thomas do it, but it seems as though through looking at Leah Thomas's social media, what Leah Thomas is liking on the back end on platforms like Instagram, Leah Thomas is into the idea of dressing as a woman and fetishizes it which is evidenced by Leah Thomas also dating a another trans woman who has a sex bondage bedroom with all sorts of kink paraphernalia everywhere. Leah Thomas talks about how attractive it is to dress up as a woman, uh, has an affliction known as autogynophobia, or autogynophilia, Philia, Philia, yeah. <laughs> not phobia, because she's clearly not scared of it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and knowing all this they still allow it knowing all of this information knowing how uncomfortable it makes other female swimmers which riley Gaines comes and speaks up about speaks up about and says you know what it's not just me but these other girls can't say it out loud and if they do say it out loud they have to say it with some sort of air of anonymity they have to cover their faces and modulate their voices in order to come forward and advocate for their own safety what type of world are we living in? Because we used to be in this whole feminist era of protecting women, of allowing them to vocalize their opinions and saying, don't be quiet. Didn't the Me Too movement say that women shouldn't shut up anymore, that they should stand up and be able to talk about when they don't feel safe, be able to talk about when they are the victims of crime and assault? But now, if you are a swimmer who is against a man walking in naked to your locker room, you have to cover your face, modulate your voice, and sit behind, I don't know, curtains to be able to talk about the fact that this is happening to you. Okay, yeah, how far we've fallen from, you know, believe all women to now we're force all women to be a player in a man's fetish, uh, yep. a sexual fantasy. Like that is how far we've come to you're now the bigoted one women if you're not willing to make yourself an object and a play your role in this person's sexual preferences or deviancy or whatever it may be and you know we talk about not kink shaming people it's like you whatever you want to do in the privacy of your own home i guess we shouldn't shame you for that but when you start involving other people and you start uh inserting yourself into women's locker rooms under the guise of this uh this idea then that's harm and that's affecting other people and that's not okay. So we should shame the crap out of that. Yes, and it just needs to be brought to light and you need to tell women that it's okay to say something about it. It is so wild to me that we've now created unsafe, everything's an unsafe space for women now because you can't even vocalize what you feel about these things. Now, move on from Leah Thomas. What have we covered so far? We've covered powerlifting, we've covered swimming. Here's surfing. LGBTQ plus community is jubilant as world's first competitive trans surfer destroys opposition to win a one-sided women's longboard uh, contest. 
and becomes the first surfer in history to win both the men's and the women's division. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, and this surfer is named Sasha Jane Lowerson and had initially won the men's competition under the name Ryan Egan. So we're just really collecting awards here. You know, if, you, if you've accomplished the men's division, you're like, I want to move on to broader horizons. I want to do something a little different. I want, I want to do something avant-garde, really switch and flip the script on these people. Just go on over to the women's division and do it over there, baby. That's this is a true true world champion to Scott and yes. I. Yeah, yes. exactly. True world champion. Stunning and brave. This is yeah. true dominance. Uh, Genghis Khan is just rolling in his grave. He wanted to accomplish the same for both men and women and just didn't get around to it in his time. But now mm. we have this surfer doing it. And I want to make the point, guess what you will never see? You will never see a biological female do the same thing. You will never see a biological female transition to male, move over to the men's division and win anything. Why? Because the strength is different. Women are not capable of achieving the same accolades by and large. Of course, there are exceptions to that very real rule, but you are not going to see the same thing happen with trans men. You're not. You're simply not. So if we can acknowledge that fact, we should also be able to acknowledge that the strength of men and women is very different. Now, if you weren't satisfied with powerlifting, swimming, surfing, Let's move on to skateboarding, where we've had a trans woman do the exact same thing. And I want to shout out a woman, a biological woman, who is actually doing the work and calling this out. Her name is Taylor Silverman. Now, here, here's your trans skateboarder here, uh, Richie Trays. Richie Trays, I guess is how you pronounce it. And uh, went and, and won a competition for skateboarding uh, because obviously there's no difference between biological men and women. And Taylor Silverman, who bravely stood up and said, this is unacceptable in a now very viral Instagram post. We've had Taylor Silverman on the show. You can check out that interview if you'd like by going through our old videos. But she competed in a Red Bull skateboarding competition and lost that Red Bull skating competition. And... When this happens, not only are you losing the credit that you deserve having worked so hard in whatever sport you are uh, trying to achieve things in, but there's also money to be lost here. These women are competing and gaining finances from the work that they put into their uh, individual sports. So Taylor not only lost the award, but she lost money that she would have been compensated had she won that award to a biological man who, of course, would dominate a woman in a skateboard competition. If that wasn't enough, uh, it's happened, what, there's been Laurel Hubbard in, in lifting, there's been Fallon Fox who was fighting and uh, boxing, I believe. There's a multitude of sports where this continuously is happening, although people will tell you, it's not happening. It's not happening. We watched the Vice debates and uh, what Eli, the transgender representative for women on the Vice debate, said, well, they haven't won any international titles, so it must not be happening. They haven't won at the Olympics, so it must not be happening. Well, just you wait, guys, because if this train continues on its track, the Olympics is next, baby. I watched Leah Thomas on Good Morning America saying that if he had the opportunity to make it to the Olympics and compete against the female swimmers, he would take it in a heartbeat. And that's where he's got his eyes set. So, on to bigger and better things, guys. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, now we have to go back to this story that we covered last week uh, where Hershey's, you know, the, the chocolate company where you used to go and buy your, your milk chocolate bar. Maybe you like the one with almonds in it. You know, maybe you like to switch it up and keep you on your toes. Well, they're keeping you on your toes by doing this campaign called Her For She, featuring a trans woman for International Women's History Month. My name is Faye Johnstone. I'm the executive director of Wisdom to Action. We can create a world where everyone is able to live in public space as their honest and authentic selves. See the woman changing how we see the future at Hershey's Canada. My mm -hmm. Now, of course, people weren't really happy about this <laughs> to see Hershey's first campaign as far as uh, it pertains to women and advocating for them be a trans woman uh, by the name of Faye Johnston. 
that would maybe set off a red flag for some. They've, of course, limited the view of this advertisement now on their Twitter because of the hate that they got and have now gone back to actually representing biological women. I think their most recent ad is Mindy Kaling. So, so we're still getting some sort of progressive leaning female. So wait, are they transphobes now because they went away from the trans person representing women or... You know, they should have just stuck with it and doubled down. Yeah, I think so. Uh, they should have just changed their name of their company to her slash she and ran with that for the rest of all time. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what they should have done. And they didn't because they kind of, I think they care about their consumers. I think they care about making money. And they thought maybe this was going to make them a little bit of money. And then it backfired. <laughs> it backfired fiercely. And Faye Johnston, of course, had to say something about this. The person represented in that ad said the reaction to my inclusion as a trans woman in Hershey's Canada International Women's Day campaign shows just how far we still have to go in the fight for feminist liberation and trans rights. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not shutting up. I will continue to stand up for women and girls, cis and trans. <sighs> By taking cis women's places yep, on Women's Day. Exactly, exactly. This is how we represent cis women, which you guys already know. I'll say it for the record in case you don't know this about me. I am not a cis woman. I am simply a woman. I reject the phrase cisgender. It was created out of thin air as a means to deviate us from trans people who are taking on this caricature of being a woman, taking on her, she pronouns, and taking on just rights to womanhood that they do not deserve. For so long, the feminist movement has been saying, women have been victimized and oppressed by men, but if the man wears a wig and puts on makeup, suddenly they're oppressed? Is that what is that what happens? Do they take on all the oppression that women have been facing for decades in this country now that they simply identify as one? And is that as far as you have to go, just saying I am a woman in order to be one? I guess so, because that's what a lot of people are doing now. They're just saying, well, I'm a woman. And people go, oh, guess that means you can do whatever you want. Please, please enter the competition. Absolutely. Absolutely. You wanna go, you wanna go in, you, go, you wanna go in the ring and punch a woman in the face? Oh, by all means, <laughs> don't let me stop you. <laughs> in fact, let me smack your ass on the way in there. <laughs> That's exactly where we're at anyways. Let's keep moving. We have more stories to cover, guys. And here's why it becomes extremely important to talk about things. You know, a lot of people will look at the different things happening in sports and go, whatever, it's sports. You lose a little bit of money here and there for the competitions you're competing in. Uh, the women aren't speaking up. Uh, why should I speak up and do anything about it? I don't like watching the WNBA anyways. <laughs> but if you allow this to happen in sports, where else does it happen? This is the key. Once you've accepted something to a small extent, guess what? That often goes on to be accepted on a larger extent, which is where we get stories like this out of the New York Post. Incarcerated transgender woman Demi Minor impregnates two inmates at a New Jersey prison. So this transgender woman was uh, put behind bars at the New Jersey's women prison and proceeded to impregnate two fellow inmates, prompting officials to move her to a different facility. And that different facility is a male one. Considering that this inmate still had working male genitalia uh, that he put to work on uh, other inmates, leading to children. So let's let's think about what that means. Not only I know some there's they're saying that uh, these instances for the most part were consensual, which uh, we won't even get into that talk there. But uh, let's let's say these things are are consensual. Now you have two children who are going to be born to what single mothers in the prison system. Two children who are have now been set up for failure within our current society as far as prerequisites to success. You have two parents who are incarcerated. And what it, what is what happens to that child? Foster care system. So in for the sake of your ideology, for the sake of saying we did something right, we affirmed somebody, we made somebody feel good and we transferred them over to another facility. You now have two children who have a high likelihood of growing up in the foster care system, which, you know, leads to things like abuse, 
and assault, a lack of proper educational resources, higher likelihood to go to jail, higher likelihood of chronic illness, higher likelihood of being a victim of or perpetrating other assaults onto other people, higher likelihood of crime, higher likelihood of homelessness. But we made a man who thinks he's a woman feel good. And this just goes to show you that suppression of the truth is not a victimless crime. And we talk so often about these stories. And a common theme is that it's easy to forget the those who are going to suffer from it. And, you know, in this case, it's the the children that are going to be born, uh, hopefully out of uh, the out of this situation who, like you said, are going to be introduced into the world under the the really unfortunate and circumstances that are going to be an uphill battle battle for them. Um, and it's the same thing that happens, like we talk about with the BLM stuff. They're, you know, th they suppress the truth in favor of their narratives. And that's not a victimless crime because the, what ends up happening is that their communities, which need greater policing and which need the investment of uh, police resources to, in order to establish a baseline of safety so that young people can flourish, so that people can escape that, the, the, violent neighborhoods and violent lifestyles, that ends up not happening. And then the, yep. the cycle ends up perpetuating. Uh, the same thing's true like at the border. We know that there's people are being sex trafficked down there. There's all kinds of violence, um, drugs being trafficked, et cetera. Uh, but you know, we can't talk about any of that. And it's anytime that you're suppressing the truth, uh, it ends up causing harm. And yep. that's why we need to be free thinking. That's why we need to be truth seeking and we need to deal in facts and reality and the the circumstances and policies that allowed this situation to happen in this prison did not do that. And that's why we're seeing uh, these consequences. And if you want to talk about a silent victim here, there's probably no more silent victim than a woman who is sitting in prison. What systems do they have set in place to be able to even advocate for themselves? This is far different than a female swimmer who can stand up during the competition and some of these are televised and go absolutely not. I'm not going to compete in this. They can actively advocate for themselves and speak to all people in positions of power, all the people who are at that competition, all of the administrators, all of the organizations that put this on. They have a direct line to be able to achieve something and to say this is not OK. What what does a female prisoner have? Where, who are they supposed to go to and say, hey, this is wrong? You think they're going to make a call to CNN or Fox News and be able to appear live on TV that night to talk about what's happening? No. These are some of the most vulnerable people, even according to progressives. Who are the people who are constantly shouting about prison reform and doing something for the people who are in this position, who are incarcerated? It's the left. But now you're saying, oh, let's throw some men in there. Even sexual predators. So men who were convicted of sex crimes against women can now say, I identify as a woman, put me in the women's facility. And if you don't believe me, here's a story uh, out of Free Beacon. California's female prisoners feel threatened by transgender inmates, and the state does not care. California was one of the pushers of this, uh, where you could basically, as a male inmate, fill out paperwork and say, this is my identification, and I want to move over to a female facility. And guess what, guys? Shocker they started to see the rates of transgenderism in male facilities skyrocket so high that there were in fact more transgender people in male facilities in California uh, percentage wise than there are in the US population. <laughs> so remember, this is a very small sliver of our population. In fact, the smallest, but you're seeing super high numbers within male prisons and all of a sudden it's larger than the real reflection that we see in, in civil society? How does that happen? Maybe it's because men go, oh, it's like a golden parachute just fell in my lap. And now I get to move, move over to a facility that's safer. And also there's a bunch of women running around. Who wouldn't want to make use of that as a man? So hundreds of them go and apply and say that I identify as woman. And guess what? Guess who gets to bear the brunt of that? Uh, the California court system and then the women who are sitting on the other end in these facilities. And you better believe there are going to be more stories like these New Jersey prisoners getting impregnated. You better believe if there haven't already been more that, that have just been covered up. If states continue to move in this direction, and they are, blue states in particular, this is what you get. Babies born in prison and thr thrust it into the foster care system. Blows my mind.
Okay. And this headline real quick is really saying the quiet part out loud of what the state of journalism is mm -hmm. in 2023. California's female prisoners feel threatened by transgender inmates. The state doesn't care. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I, I misread this. I was when you when you brought it up, I thought it was transgender inmates feel threatened. Oh, the state yeah. doesn't care. No, no, no. I guess that my that's the narrative of my head fitting into the reality, but that that wouldn't have surprised me if the leftist uh, publication did the exact same. No, <laughs> did what I just said it's real. But, if uh, I could, I think I actually have a screenshot somewhere on this computer that I can find uh, that will actually. Vocalize. This was a conservative or right leaning publication that said the truth, yep. which is. The state doesn't care that the actual women feel threatened by the transgender inmates. But you could just as easily imagine a headline where the uh, a left leaning publication would say, well, yeah, the transgender inmates feel threatened. Let's, and, let's and pull one. it up for you. Here it is. Okay. Yeah, this is a this is a screenshot that my boyfriend sent me the other day. Here's one headline lawsuit. Female prisoner says she was raped by transgender inmates. Right below it. CNN. Trans women are still incarcerated with men and it's putting their lives at risk. There you go. There you go. So uh, just in case you, you you needed to see it with your own eyes, truth is stranger than fiction. There are the headlines side by side on Google as you look up these issues. <sighs> I'd like to thank the liberal media for bailing me out on that uh, blunder. <laughs> you can always <laughs> rely on them right now. You could literally say any any anything right now and probably find a liberal headline that backs it up. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> now, speaking of the future where more women are victimized, their accolades are stolen from them. What about childbirth? What happens there? Here we have a TikTok from a trans influencer saying how I could be the first tran a pregnant trans woman. Let's hear it. Today I want to tell y'all how I could be the world's first pregnant transgender woman. Now am I actually going to be the first one? Who knows? But you're probably wondering how can a transgender woman be pregnant if she doesn't have a uterus? Well, that's why you do a uterine transplant. So long story short, a donor uterus would be planted into me, it would be fertilized, a baby would be born, and then the uterus would be taken out so my body doesn't reject it. And this procedure has already been done on some cis women, meaning women who were born women and identify as women, and 16 of them have been successful and babies were born from donor uterus. Now, of course, the baby technically would not be my biological child unless I chose to fertilize the egg with my frozen man juice. And this should all be possible within like the next 10 to 20 years. So when when I'm like 28 years old, I could get pregnant. I could be pregnant. Now, of course, it's never been done on a trans woman yet, but it just goes to show how crazy science is and anything is possible. Today, just need a moment of silence uh, to really process what I've just taken in. And I don't want to laugh. This is a coping mechanism. This is disheartening at best to to watch and not only because you know we're abandoning truth you know the same old speech we give every single time we talk about these issues but i want to focus on actually this person here sitting in this video smiling about this and let's talk about what they're really saying how i could be the world's first pregnant trans woman they are talking about being born male growing up in your male body, deciding to transition. So at, at this age, I'm, I'm assuming this person has already been through puberty and is just doing the hormone replacement therapy. Okay, then we're gonna do the top surgery to add on fake breasts and have that look, which, and, you know, it's, it's, it's the same. I, I, we won't call that necessarily mutilation, although it is, uh, but we do that, okay. So now the top looks more more feminine. Facial feminization surgeries where we just essentially reconstruct our entire face to look feminine. Okay, that's done. What about bottom surgery? So bottom surgery where we chop off our male parts and we reconstruct a female part. And for those of you who are unaware of how this process works, once that's done and you do have a female looking part, obviously not a real female part, there is no a uterus, there is no ovaries, there is no fallopian tubes. You just have essentially a hole that has been placed there in your body by the surgeon. You have to continuously dilate that. So they send you home with dilators that you have to use on yourself for a given period of time to make sure that what they've placed there stays open, stays looking the way that it's supposed to look. So you do that. 
which is a very painful and uncomfortable process, not to mention that a lot of these surgeries are still being developed and are in experimental phases where the side effects are just unbelievable and you can't really be all that warned about. There's probably a, a, a list as long as your birth control because they don't know what's going to happen to you after you get these things done. So now you have that and then they go, you know what, let's, let's do another thing. I want to get pregnant. So let's cut myself open, get the uterus from a woman, place it in, go through all the different fertilization things you have to do to house a fertilized egg in that uterus, and then somehow get the baby out, which I imagine would have to be done through cesarean section because there's no way a baby is coming through that surgically placed canal. And hearing all that, you go, wow, that's crazy. Ooh, science. Wow, it's wonderful the things that they can do and, you know, how, how insane it is that they could, they could possibly pull this off. When I hear that, I think, what must this person be going through in their brain to do this to themselves? We are talking about, if you go through this whole process, years, not months, not weeks, years of ongoing pain, ongoing destruction, mutilation, surgeries, procedures, years worth what do you have to be going through mentally to say, I want to sign myself up for that. And in fact, I want to be the first to do what could be a very, very dangerous procedure on my body that leads to a child. I can't imagine. I don't know what that feels like. And I, I don't even know what it feels like to wake up every day and feel like you are in the wrong body. I, I cannot understand that. I cannot fathom that. I do not wish that on anybody. But to feel that way and then go down this path has got to be a rough ride. Now this person is smiling through this entire video. I can guarantee you, I, I can't guarantee you, but I'll just posture and guess and say, when the camera goes off, I don't think a smile is what you're typically getting from this person. I just don't think so. No. Um, yeah. And look, I, it's like, I can have compassion on, on people with gender dysphoria. And like you said, we have no idea what they're going through mm -hmm. mentally to feel like they would have to go down this route. But uh, at the same time, and I don't know how all this parses out, but I, I can say that a lot of this thinking, a lot of what would be driving people to do this is part of coming from an ideology that promises you that you can become a woman. Mm -hmm. And that is simply not true. It is a lie. And so a lot of harm is being done. A lot of confusion is being created. A lot of people are going down a path that is leading to a lifetime of misery, of sterilization, of never being able to achieve the thing that is being dangled out in front of them by this ideology, that the ideology promises them that yes, you can become a woman, but the reality is, and the hard fact is no matter how many surgeries you get, or no matter what you do, you cannot become a woman because a woman is something that is down to the essence. It's not purely a physical thing uh, no, because no matter how many surgeries you do, you're not going to arrive there. I'm a Christian. Uh, you know, I, I, as a matter of first principles, you look, God made us in our, in his image, male and female. But even if you don't want to invoke Christianity to get down to what the essence of a woman is, there's part of growing up a woman. There's part of your physiology. There's your brain makeup. There's the experience of being a little girl all the way into adolescence, adulthood. That is a unique thing that is part and parcel of making what a woman is and what becoming a woman is. And, you know, I have compassion for people with gender dysphoria, but I'm compassionate enough to tell you the truth that, that you're being lied to. And the lie is that you can become a woman. You cannot, you, you know, and again, I don't know what the best treatment is. I hope and mm -hmm. pray that people with gender dysphoria find peace, but I don't think that this lie, that this ideology dangles out in front of people is is really helping them. And it's not. And here's some proof of it. You guys all know we're going to try to cover as many stories as possible. I want to get all of this out on International Women's Day. And also thank you guys for watching. You have now hit the record for uh, the live viewers that we've had on this stream over 2K. So thank you guys so much. Please do uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to this channel already because we like to cover topics like this. Now, in terms of talking about this inability to achieve what people are going after uh, when they say, you know, I'm trans, I want to be a woman. Let's focus on Jazz Jennings and I want to watch a clip really quick. For those of you who don't know who Jazz Jennings is, this was the first super famous televised transitioning of a child. Jazz Jennings' mother talks about, oh, well, Jazz knew that he was a girl as young as two years old. That's when it was communicated to us. And Jazz's mother 
unfortunately and wickedly in my opinion, commercialized Jazz transition, put it live on television, so now Jazz Jennings, her entire life, his entire life, whatever you want to say, has been beholden to this idea that has been televised to the world. And what happens when you say an idea and it's televised to the world? You feel the need to hold on to that idea. And then the world sucks it in, takes it in, cheers you on, and shouts it right back at you, and then you're a trans activist who has to stand by this idea the entire the entirety of your life. And if you don't have the mental fortitude or the courage to stand up for yourself and say, no, this doesn't feel right, in fact, I was wrong, guess what you are for the rest of your life? You are exactly what your mother said you were at two years old. Now, if you want proof to show that this is what's happening to Jazz Jennings, let's watch. So, um, are you feeling like you wanted to start talking about are you okay? I'm okay. I feel like I'm gonna cry. But yeah. You know I can't get out of my head. I know. No, listen. <laughs> it I know. just doesn't stop. It's okay. Give me a hug. It's okay. I know what you're going through. We've been there before. No, it still doesn't stop now. I and I'm already going no, back to you, negative. But the more you're talking about yourself, it gets harder. Mm -hmm. You're digging in and you're, it's making you put a, a magnifying glass on what's mm -hmm. already difficult as it is. So this is hard for you, I know, and you don't, we don't want to push and you I know, anymore. I'm the one doing it, like... I know, you're your own worst enemy. What? Are you... <laughs> Let's keep, I'm gonna hold my thoughts. Let's keep watching. <laughs> I feel kind of all over the place and like my mind is very cluttered and not clear. And I really want to have that clarity. I really want to understand myself and be able to read my own soul and what I want. And it's just very challenging. And I think I'm kind of breaking down a little bit and spiraling into negativity. I just want to feel like myself. Like, that's right. it. You're I don't like care. All I want is to be happy and feel like me. And I don't feel like what me ever. Me? I don't feel like me ever. All I want to do is be happy and feel like me. And a lot of people will hear this and blame Jazz for what's happened right now. She bears no responsibility for what has happened to her. That is all her parents. Her parents, when you are two years old and your parent goes, you are now a trans child and you're gonna transition to be a female, what choice do you have other than to be exactly what they say? And for her mother to sit there and say, why are you vocalizing this stuff? It's just gonna put a magnifying glass on your problems. Don't talk about it. You know, don't don't do it, don't do it anymore. Don't go there. It's horrible advice on its own. On its face, it's horrible advice. But it's even more horrible when you know what she did to that girl now. What she did to Jazz. And then for her to say, you are your own worst enemy, I'm sorry. Stand up and go look in the mirror because you are looking at her worst enemy. It is you. You are the person who did this to her. And now she is morbidly obese. She is depressed. She is anxious. She has no sense of self because her sense of self was stripped from her at two years old. And now she has no guidance and no way forward because the world has dedicated her as a trans activist. And still she continues to rally for trans rights for the transitioning of children. Why? because the lie was fed to her so young that there's no other way to be. And her mother should feel ashamed for having done that to her, horrified for having done that to her. And how dare she sit there and look at her and say that you are your own worst enemy. Blows my mind. And Jazz is not the only person who is going through this. You can look up a dozen stories, a hundred stories, thousands even now, of detransitioners saying that the exact same thing happened to them. Chloe Cole is an interesting source to go to who detransitioned back to female and is saying now due to all this experimenting that she did, she lacks a strong sense of self, is still trying to figure out all of the, the medical, basically malpractice trying to figure out all the medical problems that she's going to have for the rest of her life. Now, Jazz Jennings has openly said that she has no sexual sensation whatsoever and it will probably not be regained due to the surgeries that she's undergone. How are you supposed to... And this is all supposed to help you get out of depression and anxiety and make you feel better about yourself. This is what happens. And thank goodness that moment was televised so that people can see what comes to fruition when you allow this to happen. It's just horrifying. It's just horrifying. And Jazz is not going to get justice. This is something that deserves justice for children. This should not be allowed. That's why you have states like Tennessee saying, no, you are not allowed to transition your children. We are going to ban this. Minors are not in the headspace. They do not have the mental fortitude, the strength, the knowingness to even sign themselves up for a decision like this. And parents shouldn't be able to do that to their children. Wild. And to think that Jazz is never going to wake up and see that, 
because the lie was fed to her so young and injected into her life so young and they turned on the television cameras and put her face everywhere is truly sad. But it's happening to people all over now. And this is also something going back to the the TikTok we saw earlier. Um, there's there's something to be said about this untethered narcissism that each of these people have have projected out there onto other people. And the issue I had with the TikTok um, individual was the fact that they weren't even thinking about the potential physical harm they could be doing to this child, this little baby. Yeah. Um, if they were to go through that process, yep. it's literally all about them and how they can be validated, yep. and it's no one else. And then you look at this this poor Jazz's mother doing mm -hmm. the exact same thing it's not only physical harm it's psychological to its core yep she's saying i no i'm the mother that did this i must be right we televised it there's no way i'm wrong so anything that you're feeling right now that's your fault you're your own worst enemy and i i've had to deal with your victimization i've had to deal with your mental health issues as a mother and i'm the one who brought you down the path to make you feel better and to bring you to who you are today not the opposite not i destroyed you not i took all your sense of self and i threw it out the window no i did the right thing you are your own worst enemy and better yet with that TikTok, let's throw a baby in the mix there and see if it comes out on the other end alive that's a fantastic point scott because yeah to do that and to say yeah we well we we hope i'm the first trans woman to have a baby who knows what's going to happen along the way to that to that child if it makes it out of this process of having a uterine transplant and then being fertilized and placed in there in a body where it is not meant to be let's just see let's experiment let's figure it out yeah it's narcissism wow, it's it's pure and disregard for anyone else's uh, reality or any consequences of my actions. It's all about me feeling validated in my experience and my ideology and what I want. And if I have to abuse my child or bring a child into this world that is going to suffer because of it, so be it. I don't care because I need to feel validated in my beliefs. Yep. And other people like to virtue signal so that they get their own sense of validation from it. We watched it as Biden invited, uh, Dylan Mulvaney to the White House, and now his wife is taking on the, the same torch as the Biden administration gives an International Women of Courage Award to a biological man. There's the photo, because not only do we get to seek validation in our feeling of being a woman and go on to achieve awards, but the people who give us those awards feel damn good about themselves for doing so. Get to pat themselves on the back and say, you see, I was on board when nobody else was, but there's a reason that nobody else is. There's a reason that people are calling this out, and if not calling it out, feeling this way silently. But still, we get awards, and even more so than awards, let's give recognition to trans women on International Women's Day, because that's what the day is for, right? It's not for us cis women. <laughs> and Canada. And the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, put out a statement, of course, for International Women's Day. I want to see how long it takes us to hear uh, the word trans in this statement and where, where we get to that point. It starts off each and every day, women and girls help shape Canada into a fairer and stronger country. As we mark International Women's Day, we celebrate and recognize the achievements of women and girls in Canada and reaffirm our commitment to removing systemic barriers to advance to advance gender equality in Canada and around the world. This year's theme, Every Woman Counts, is a reminder that all women from all ages and walks of life have a place in every aspect of Canadian society. With the disturbing rise of anti-transgender hate here in Canada, we reiterate today that trans women are women and we will always stand up to hate whenever and wherever it occurs. So we got to paragraph two. We got to paragraph two and sentence number four before transgender women were mentioned uh, as part of International Women's Day. Because of course they're, they're more important. They're more important than cisgender women. They deserve all the recognition uh, on this most auspicious day, International Women's Day. In Canada, and specifically Prime, Mis Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau wanted to make that abundantly clear to you just wonderful <laughs> on behalf of the fellows again scott and i would like to shout out to trudeau and the government of canada for acknowledging biological men on this women's day thank you very much yep thank you sir it's a big win
Big win for you guys. Uh, yeah. Another W for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> we love, we love Justin Trudeau. I wonder if he's going to give himself recognition next year on Black History Month, if he's going to pull up that old blackface picture of himself and just lump <laughs> himself in with the group of, of black people being recognized that month for their historic achievements, because that's essentially what you're doing. You've taken biological men who slap on makeup and wigs and say, hey, I'm a woman, and you go, oh, sure. Let's throw you in an International Women's Day. So, Justin Trudeau, if you're watching this, which we know you are, of course, <laughs> throw that old blackface picture out there on the internet next Black History Month and talk about how you deserve recognition as a black person on February 1st. I'll be waiting for that. Trans black men are black men. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, they are. Yeah, trans trans blacks are, are real blacks. Rachel Dolezal <laughs> deserves recognition today. And an apology from all of civil society who hated on her for saying that she was trans black. In fact, let's even throw Ollie London in there, who at one point mm -hmm. said that he was trans Korean, and give him a round of applause and say, you know what? Based on what we're doing with gender right now, which is far more binary than race, I apologize. Because you can be trans Korean. And you can be trans black, Rachel Dolezal and Justin Trudeau. I know you really want to hear this. You can be trans black. We all know mm -hmm. deep down that's what you want to be. So now, really quickly before we move on to Super Chats, let's call out some people in the game who are doing some wonderful things and getting the work done as far as calling out this ideology and standing up for biological women. First on the list is Dr. Deborah So. Of course, now she stands among the others that we mentioned, Riley Gaines, uh, Chloe Cole, who are doing great work. I'm sure there were others. Here's Deborah So on Dr. Phil. I really take issue with this narrative that children, quote unquote, know their true selves or they know their gender identity if they believe that they're transgender or that the transition is purely due to social stigma or due to transphobia. If you actually talk to detransitioners, as I have, you'll hear the reasons as to why they have chosen to detransition, why they have regret about their decisions, in many cases, having undergone medicalization. There's so many other issues that these young people are struggling with, whether it is being on the autism spectrum. They have many of them, if not all I've spoken to, have a history of sexual trauma. They are not comfortable with their sexuality if they are gay. Um, they may have anxiety, depression, and in some cases, as in Ryan's case, you know, if it's a young woman who reaches puberty, is not comfortable in her body, she thinks that because she doesn't like being sexualized by society, that means that she's actually a man or she's a, she's so-called non-binary, even though there are only two genders. I really take issue with this. Pause there. And um, you see the uncomfortability in the room uh, <laughs> as, as she talks because she is a neuroscientist and she's talking about real research that she's done with her own eyes, her own hands, her own body, her own heart, and people that she's actually talked to who are going through this, and how she so is so clear-cut in saying there are other things going on here. And for you to sit there and fail to recognize the other things that are going on here, you are doing something wrong. And I want to point out that I think a lot of the trans people that we've discussed in this uh, episode today are not the real strugglers of gender dysphoria. And you can say that that's invalidating their experience, whatever you want to call it. But you know, let me, let's, let's pull it up. Uh, you know, we got Dylan. Mm, I, Dylan, I, I'll, I'll show uh, maybe a bit, of, a bit of compassion to Grant Sykes, who hopped on the bandwagon here, uh, day 54 of being a girl. 54 of being a girl, and I am entering my Vestavia Hills mm. house. Yeah, really, really suffering there. That one who's cheering up and down about a uterine transplant, mm, interesting. Leah Thomas, who can't wait to make it to the Olympics, mm, interesting. Behind all of this, there are people who are truly struggling with gender dysphoria, who every day wake up devastated to look in the mirror and look at their bodies and think about themselves or what they're dealing with. And there can be a multitude of reasons why somebody feels that way. As Deborah So just stated, things like autism and being on the spectrum tend to uh, lend to this sort of identity and struggling with gender dysphoria. Issues with your body and, and body dysmorphia uh, tend to lend to identifying with gender dysphoria. Issues with your sexuality and not knowing what sex you like and, and all of that tend to lend themselves to this I identification and feeling of gender dysphoria. And all of that <laughs> can be lost in, in this conversation when you have all of this other stuff happening. And these people represent a very small subset of society. 
yet it is the most trendy thing and we're seeing it everywhere now. It's all over TikTok, it's all over Instagram, it's all over the Grammys and Caitlyn Jenner's winning woman of the year. How much of this is really going on and how many people are truly suffering with this on the sidelines while these caricatures are taking the limelight and being invited to the White House. So thank you to Deborah So for going on Dr. Phil and talking about this. I also want to shout out this girl. I hope I say her name right. Letitia KY or Letitia KY. I met her through Instagram and she has been doing amazing work. She is an artist and sort of self-proclaimed turf because people call her a turf all the time. And she's saying, you know, I'm, this word is not going to uh, be a fight that I battle with anymore. I am a, a radical feminist who is calling out this stuff and is saying that no, I, I'm I'm not going to be silent while this is happening to women. And she stood in defense of J.K. Rowling. She made this amazing post for International Women's Day today of her in a witch hat that she's created with hair, by the way. That is so dope. Anyways, uh, where she talks about this word turf and all the different ways that she used to hate the word because she was called it so often for standing up for herself and standing up for women and she likened it to a modern day witch hunt which is what feminists like to talk about all the time all oh, the salem witch trials when powerful women were yelled at and screamed at and accused of being witches and burned at the stake and drowned in the ponds What's happening right now? What's happening right now when powerful women try to stand up for themselves and say hey a change needs to be made here Turf, get her. Transphobe, get her. Do something about this. She shouldn't be able to say these things. Silence her. Seize her. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. So uh, shout out to her for doing the work as well. And of course, shout out to JK Rowling, who's taken uh, an amazing audience and, and vast audience that she has and used it as a platform to advocate for women, most recently uh, coming to the forefront and saying that 14 is too young for people to decide their gender, saying she questioned her own sexuality as an adolescent, but grew up to be straight. She's constantly talking about this issue, has uh, taken on uh, the torch for, I guess, being a turf. <laughs> and, and advocating for women. And the, of course, there are many more. If you guys are following people who you admire uh, talking about this subject, drop it in the comments down below and let people know what resources and things that you are taking in. Now we're going to get to Super Chats. This has been a long show. We covered a lot of ground and still not everything. There's still more. But wait, there's more. If you call now, <laughs> you can see another biological female being defeated in a different sport. Didn't even talk about beauty pageants and all that other stuff. Uh, Taylor, do you have Super Chats? I do. Okay, Wonderful. so first... We have Diva Dawn, who says, hey, Amala and crew, looking fabulous as always. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Diva. Appreciate I it. I love being called fabulous on <laughs> International <laughs> Women's Day. Yeah. So uh, all... YouTube is censoring my content. It says, real women have only fans. Do you, <laughs> so do you have one? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, no, I don't. I've mm. not heard the phrase, real women have only fans uh, not, not certainly not a phrase that I support. <laughs> Real women have email lists and we do have one of those. So that's if you want true. exclusive content from Ambala, that's where it's coming. And from. I promise you that if I ever do create an OnlyFans, you'll get it through the email list. So you better <laughs> sign up oh, now. And it's going to be the biggest sign up day ever. Right you'll there. never, you'll <laughs> never get it anywhere else. If I ever start selling feet pics, they're going exclusively through the email list. <laughs> so Oh, man, we're going to get so many emails. I love it. Uh, Diva Don again says, Taylor cracks me up. Laughing emoji. Thank you, Diva Don. Glad I, you know, Amla never laughs at my dad jokes, so I'm glad somebody yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every once in a blue moon, I do. <laughs> Sup, my dude says, Amla, I watched the Whatever podcast and it gave me brain cancer. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm kind of pissed off, y'all. I'm not going to lie. I did the whatever podcast and it was kind of like, meh, whatever. Most of the girls agreed with me. Or, and when they tried to challenge me, it was just like, you really want to talk about this right now? And then Michael Knowles went on the whatever podcast and they gave him all the little lefty liberal girls and he was all charming them with his riz and everything. And they were like, oh, Michael, no. what? Why, why couldn't Tragic. I have got that panel? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to file... I'm going to write a strongly worded letter that I don't send, like Dylan Mulvaney <laughs> on day one of being a girl. Next. Um, <laughs> well, somebody had also said, you looked bored and unimpressed, and I don't blame you. So I think the audience could tell all the comments were like, you should have brought on some some combative people to, to go I back and forth. I hope I didn't look like Lula, which may happen. too bored. I wasn't trying to yeah. look super bored, but... 
Might have happened. Uh, Camille Rose says, bro, the shop teacher, shop teacher was put on leave because he didn't wear the prosthetic boobs outside when he wasn't in class. That's why he got put on leave, not because he had the boobs in the first place. Tragikistan. Wow. <laughs> so we take away any credit to the school for banning him because they're I... only banning him because he, they figured out he was trolling. Yeah. Wow. Tragic. Y'all need some help up there in Canada, man. Y'all really um, do. Jay Nash says, hey, Amelin Taylor, huge fan, favorite podcast. Oh, thank you thank so you. much. We appreciate Should it. Should have included Scott, though, if you're really yeah. a fan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Han Banak says, uh, on on whatever your marriage take was terrible, being atheist, I am too. There's no reason not to secure a vow of lifelong commitment. Statistically, the marriage, mere cohabitation and kids has tragic outcomes. Yeah, because that's what uh, people, that's, oh, we want, We don't have to get into this whole entire <laughs> thing. But that's because people have a view of marriage as, as being a commitment. I think that's why a lot of marriages end. They're like, oh, I got him to sign the paper. What a wonderful thing. Now that means we're going to last forever. And they take this vow and then they go, oh, wait, it was a paper that we can get out of now a lot of people are obviously going to disagree with me on that take but marriage to me or the institution of of marriage is neither here nor there if you want to get married get married and i am no way advocating that people do not get married i'm just saying that a commitment from a partner who is with you long term dedicated to you and you guys are taking on life together if that's a good man and a good partner and you found the person that that commitment is going to be there regardless of whether or not you went to the courthouse Continue. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Scott and I will go on the whatever podcast with you and debate marriage. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Dallin Johnson says, you show, your you show has given me so much hope in the future uh, of the this country. Keep it up, Skies. Thank you. Thanks, Dallin. We're going to keep at it. Peter is my first name. It's an interesting last name. Um, says Vivek Ramaswamy, YouTube title, Woke Capitalism Against America, mentioned the Occupy Wall Street movement was swapped for woke capitalism to continue corruption business as usual. Have you seen the video? Uh, yes, I know. I'm very familiar with Vivek Ramaswamy. So I'm actually putting out a documentary soon where we talk about alternatives to woke corporations and are featured in that documentary is none other than Vivek Ramaswamy. So I got to interview him about Strive Capital, I believe, is what he's uh, created. So so yeah, he will be in that documentary. And yes, I have seen that. He's a smart guy. Yeah, he's saying some good stuff these days, but that's not an endorsement. It is not um, endorsement, but <laughs> it makes cool. The coach for introverts says, am I allowed to celebrate Women's Day? I'm a woman. Yeah, everybody uh, can celebrate Women's Day. This is the thing. You can all celebrate. Just don't want you running around throwing any biological males in there, but to each their own. Amal is coaching the coach on uh, on Women's Day here. <laughs> uh, TPS says pronouns are the roipnol of trans ideology. Stop using them. Incarcerated women cannot consent. Call it R dash P dash. Do you know what R O H Y P N O L is? R O A. Someone tell us in the chat if you know what that means. I need my Urban Dictionary or something. I yeah I don't know. But rohypnol. Yeah. I see what they're saying. Yeah, rohypno. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, it's but an, I still it's, don't know what that means. When I look it up, it says it's a medication. It's a benzodiazepine used to treat severe insomnia and assist with anesthesia. Hmm. I'm, I mean, I think I get what they're saying that, you know, by using pronouns, you're kind of reinforcing the, the ideology. So right. that's a valid, valid point. Dude. Um, and I learned a new word, so thank you. <laughs> Diva Dawn says, why are we expected to respect and accept people who are doing nothing but treating us like we don't matter? Why would we accept them? Hmm. Valid point. There is hmm. some, I will say through the compassionate lens, you just have to go, this person is struggling. There's something going on here that they're struggling. They're struggling far more than I'm struggling in life. So I try to give a little bit of grace there, but it's wearing thin. Yeah. Uh, Sandra Odette says, thank you. Just sends a little birdie emoji with a thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Um, autistic professor. Thank you for the generous super chat. Appreciate you, Amala and Taylor's input as a professional academic. There is no room for nuance in beliefs. I am pro human rights, including LGBT plus comma BIPOC comma disabled peeps, but sometimes libs and cons are stuck to ideology and tribalism. That nuance is lost. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I agree with you. A lot of tribalism happening in today's day and age. Lots of that. 
Yes, sir. Zachary says happy woman's day with some uh, whoop, whoop. bubbling heart emojis. Thank Love you. It. Thank Zachary. you. Uh, Ray pad tip says I'm non-binary and rooting for you. No, we aren't all it's ma'am. <laughs> it's ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a good one thank you Ray. we appreciate that yeah <laughs> love love it when you have a sense of humor Ner- nerd Isle says uh first happy national women's day but i was hoping when you see this that you could look into the whole pride month thing and how it's covering up national men's awareness month as well later on ah mm. so you guys do have a month <laughs> i did not know that i did not know that. <laughs> because they've been suppressing it that's funny i did not know that i'll have to look into that i mean i'm i i don't know why anybody needs a month for anything but so i'm kind of just anti-months just boycotting months at this point in my, at this point in my life yeah, but just, that is that is fascinating i didn't know men had a month make months just months again yes please <laughs> Uh, Life by Lexi says, in one day I found out 40 and pregnant, laid off, and had to go to the oncologist for my breast lump. Here are a few of the real things women face daily, but I keep going because I'm resilient. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, I mean, good for you for being a resilient woman. And yes, you are pointing out something that they will never, ever have to deal with. And it's so weird. They try to cosplay it. I saw a transgender video the other day on TikTok of a guy being like, I'm on hormones and now my my stomach hurts or whatever and I'm feeling like I'm cramping. I wonder if this is going to happen to me for a week every single month and this is going to be like my trans period. Oh my gosh. He's like, I hope I don't have to deal with this. I would have to take off work if this happened to me every month. B-F-F-R. Stop it. Get some help. Stop it. Yeah, shout out. Those are the types of stories that we should be elevating on Women's Day. Yes. Tell that to Justin Trudeau. Um, Rose, Russa, Rosa, Roses Are Red, Maria said, <laughs> just sends a little dancing pear emoji, it looks Love like. It. Thank you. Love it. Shout out to the pears. Autistic Professor again says, Autistic people are not as socially conforming as others, but I feel people are co opting the autistic ad- identity. So annoying. Oof. Wait. Oh, you know what? It's so true. I keep seeing girls on TikTok questioning whether or not they're autistic and saying they're like going to therapy to figure out whether or not they're autistic. And this is again, part of the whole mental health and social media mixture combo, wicked cocktail that we're dealing with right now where it's getting glamorized and people are wanting to be on the spectrum and wanting to have ADHD and ADD and OCD and all these different things. Tourette's. Yeah. Uh, It's super interesting. So yeah, I'm, yeah. What it must feel like to be a person who is actually struggling with these things when you're seeing people do this like what does an actual person who is struggling with gender dysphoria think when they see somebody like grant on their tiktok page i would Mm -hmm. love to know reach out if you have any thoughts um benjamin savage gave some british pounds thank you uh but no no message no relation to Corey matthews from boy meets world that's the name of the actor who plays Mm -hmm. ben savage uh uh Ruth Ann Amston says, Dr. So is based. Love you all. Yes, she is. And Dr. So has been on the show before. If you guys want to check out that video, you can go and check it out. We kind of give some clarity on some of the gender ideology terminology that you hear and analyze some of her tweets and how to explain them. So you guys can check that out. She's brilliant. And just a couple more. We've got Miss Best says, real women are real women. It's nice when people believe in us too. Hear, Mm -hmm. hear. And finally, Diva Dawn says, but they stand up in our sports and say, respect me. Why would we? Respect gains respect. You can demand respect. You don't deserve. 100%. And we have one more from Vicky C25. No message, but sent in the super chat. We appreciate you. Guys, thank you so much for spending International Women's Day with me and two white men. <laughs> so, well, that's always fun. <laughs> It's always a fun time, guys. Uh, I don't even know where to go from here. Sign up for the newsletter and email list. Like I said, when that OnlyFans comes out, you guys are going to be the first to know, only on the email list. Plus, very soon, we're going to be doing a giveaway of some unapologetic mugs and stickers and stuff, and those will be given out to emails that we choose from the email list. So you got to be signed up there in order to get them. 
please like, subscribe if you haven't. And thank you guys for breaking the record of the most live viewers we've had on this show as of day. It broke 2,000 today. We also have a couple more super chats. Uh, the autistic professor says, in my experience, autism is not a bad thing. Just society is crap to accommodating and recognizing us. Very fair. I would uh, second that. Uh, MX, thank you. Oh, not. Sorry. Gloria Ramirez, thank you so much for your super chat. Saw some tweets asking women to stand down from protesting this year to give room for trans, trans women because they are oppressed. Hellos from Hermosilla, Mexico. <sighs> See, it's everywhere. It's everywhere these days. Uh, and thank you. Thank you for watching from Mexico, by the way. We appreciate all of our uh, international viewers. So thank you guys so much. Please like, subscribe, click that notification bell to be notified every single day. Uh, when we post a video for you guys, if you want to sign up for the email list, you go to the description uh, and click the link for signing up to the email. Like I said, at some point we're going to be giving away these little unapologetic mugs uh, in the near future. So sign up for the email list. We'll pick some people from there and send those to you. Plus, I'll write you a little note and uh, send it to you. We want to have it be personalized. Don't want you to just get a mug, even though I'm sure you guys will use it because you love the show. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We're going to be back tomorrow with a fascinating video about a man who has seven kids from seven different baby mamas. I hope you're ready for that one because I know I am. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.